Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Renu Tyagi from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we will be discussing on the module Differential Rate of Somatic Evolution under the paper Human Origin and Evolution. The learning objective of this module are to understand the rate of evolution and differential evolutionary rate. To describe the phenomena of the punctuated equilibrium. To know about the factors that leads to the adaptive radiations. To understand the homologous, analogous and vestigial organs in the context of evolution rate. To understand the importance of the convergence and parallelism. Now let us first discuss briefly about the evolution. The understanding of the evolutionary history of any group or animal is of the fundamental importance and also tells us about the time of events in a evolution. Therefore, it is essential to determine the sequence of the event in the past. Similarly, the rate of evolution is also important. The rate at which the evolutionary changes occurs cannot be determined directly. However, evolutionary event in a chronological frame work provided by the sequence of the geological and paleontological events. Therefore, in order to determine the rate of evolution of the animal, we must clearly understand as to what is meant by the evolutionary rate. In the literature, three definitions of the evolutionary changes are available. According to the first definition, evolution may be viewed as the change in the genetic composition of the primate population. The second definition suggests that evolution is the morphological differentiation exhibited by a set of animals. The third definition of the evolution is the progressive diversification of the taxa in a larger taxonomic set. These are the definition given by the Butner Janusz. Each of the definition implies a different criteria for determining the rate of evolution. Evolution which is an incredibly common phenomena and may occur between every generation for every group of organism in the world including the humans. Over a period of time the relative proportion of the allele in a population changes, some may increase and some may decrease and still others may remain the same. Darwin saw evolution as the gradual unfolding of the new varieties of the life from the previous form over long period of time due to the evolutionary processes. But these long term effect can only come out by the accumulation of many small evolutionary changes occurring in every generation. Today we will study evolutionary changes occurring between the generations and we will be able to demonstrate how individual works. We define the evolution from the modern genetic perspective as a change in the allele frequency from one generation to the next generation. The allele frequencies are the numerical indicators of the genetic makeup of a population and the population is referred to as the interbreeding group of the individual. An inherited trait may be present in slightly different form in different individuals. The variant genes that underlie these different forms is inherited traits are called the alleles. The different expression of the inherited units is the result of the genetic variation within a population. The frequencies for the combination of the genes represents the proportion of a total and hence allele frequencies referred to only the whole group of individuals that is population. Individuals do not have the allele frequency, they have the genes or the combination of these genes. Therefore, an individual cannot evolve. Only a group of individuals can evolve over the time. This picture illustrates the different type of genetic variation. If there are no variation in an individual, then they cannot able to adapt accordingly with the changing environment and ultimately die. The presence of variability ensures the fitness of the individual 
who are well adapted to the environment due to their heritable qualities in a population. The interaction of the variation and the natural selection cause evolution to occur. Now let's understand the concept of somatic evolution. All the evolutionary changes that occur in the stroma of the cell of an animal or plant other than the reproductive cells are termed as the somatic evolution. Thus, a somatic mutation is one that is not heritable from one generation to another. It is the evolution which an individual acquire due to adaptation to changing environment in the phenotypic or morphological appearances. The study of the somatically adapted structures sometimes direct the selection process to act and thus result in the evolution. Now let's understand the concept of the punctuated equilibrium. A hypothesis published in 1972 by N. Eldridge and the Stephen J. Gold proposing that in evolutionary history occur very rapidly in short burst lasting typically less than 1 lakh years and is associated with the speciation events. In between these speciation events are the long period perhaps millions of years of relative stasis in which little evolutionary changes occurs. This hypothesis which contradicted the orthodox Darwinian view of the evolution as a gradual and continuous process prompted controversy and often heated the debates. This figure illustrate the punctuated equilibrium and gradualism with the time. Now let's consider the differential evolutionary rate as an important parameter. An evolutionary rate is the description of the dynamic changes that occur in a lineage across many generations. The rate of the evolution and its dynamic changes are crucial for men because it depicts that human rate of evolution is faster than other animal species. The dynamic change of the evolutionary factors may be in the genome itself or in the phenotypic expression of the underlying genetic events. The problem involved in the measurement of the rate of evolution has been discussed by Simpson in 1944 and 1949. One of the satisfactory method to assess the rate of evolution is to measure the amount of the genetic changes. However, this is quite impractical due to obvious reasons and difficulties. The genetic makeup of any individual carries the coded instructions or information pertaining to the living and also to the variation that occur due to the evolution. Thus, if these genetic instructions are decoded, one can learn how the lives are lived in the past. This is easily done by studying the phenotypes and their means of homeostasis. Thus, the study of the change in the characteristics of the developed organism in successive generation is a more direct method of studying of the rate of evolution than to study the change in DNA responsible for the change. Thus, the morphological studies on various organisms should be considered to evaluate the rate of evolution as it indicates that these are constructed on the same basic plan. The minor differences seen in some forms are the adaptive modification to the diverse mode of living. This can be studied under the following headings that is homology and homologous organs, analogy or analogous structures, convergent evolution, parallel evolution, adaptive radiation or vestigial organs. Now let's understand them one by one. What is homology and homologous organ? The organs of the similar structure and origin but dissimilar in the function 
and form are called as the homologous organs and the phenomena is known as the homology. The presence of the homologous organs implies a common evolutionary origin of the amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals from one ancient fish ancestor. The homologous structures seen in successive generations indicate actual relationship between the ancestors and the descendant as well as it depicts that the processor are the diverse descendants of the common ancestry and thus signifies the rate of evolution. This picture illustrates the example of homology and homologous organs. For example, the forelimb of a frog, the wings of a bird, the leg of a horse, the hand of a man and the flipper of the whale are the homologous organs because all of them have the similar pattern of the basic plan that is pentadectyly that is same number of the bones, muscles, nerves and the blood vessels etc. But they do the different function such as flipping, flying, running, grasping and swimming in the different respective animal. Phyloclades of the Opuntia and cladoid of the Ruscus are the homologous organs as both are modified stems. Similarly, a thorn of a bougainvillea and a tendril of the cucurbita are homologous as both arise in the axillary position. Now let's come to the next concept of analogy and analogous structures. The organ that perform the same function but differ in their origin and structure are called the analogous organs and the phenomena is known as the analogy. This picture illustrates the example of the analogy and the analogous structure. The wings of an insect are analogous to those of the birds and bats because they perform the same function but have the dissimilar structure and origin. The wings of an insect are modified outgrowth of the body wall whereas wings of the birds and bats are the modified for limbs. These organs have origin in the evolutionary process through adaptation of quite different organisms to a similar mode of life. Now let's see their examples. Potato and sweet potato are the analogous organs as both perform the same function of storage of the food but they differ in their structure. Potato is an underground modified stem whereas sweet potato is a modified advantageous root. Fins of the fishes and flipper of the whale are analogous organs examples because both perform the function of swimming but the flipper of the whale are pentadectyle and the fins of the fishes are not pentadectyle. The another example is the sting of the honeybee and scorpios of the analogous structures as both perform the same function. The sting of the honeybee is modified ovipositor whereas in Scorpio it is the modified last abdominal segment. The eye of an octopus and the eye of a mammal differ in their retinal position but both perform the same function. Similarly, the flipper of a penguin that is a bird and of dolphin which is a mammal that perform the similar function in these aquatic animals have originated from different structures of two different lineages. Now let's understand the concept of convergent evolution. Convergence as we all know refers to the development of the similar characters or adaptation in animals that differ in direct ancestry. The hummingbird and the humming moth for example have converged in their flying habit as a result of their common search for nectar in flower as a source of food. 
the convergence ordinarily applies to one or a few characteristics rather than to the overall makeup similarities in the retina and the layer of the visual cell in the eyes of some quite different nocturnal animals are an example of the two main type of the retinal cells that is rods and cones only rods which are more sensitive to the dim light are present in some deep sea fishes bats some lizard and snakes and probably the guinea pigs whales and some lemurs all these animals however differ markedly from each other in respect of other characteristics less directly related to their adaptation to low light conditions this figure clearly illustrate the process of divergent convergent and parallel evolution from the parental species with the time now let's understand the concept of parallel evolution an evolutionary development similar to the convergence but in related form is parallelism the parallelism implies a similarity in biological makeup of ancestral forms whereas the convergence does not if the common ancestor of the two organisms were not very ancient and if evolution in the descendant line followed more or less the same course the term parallelism is used the term is usually applied to two species of organisms that were similar in the origin and that remained similar as they evolved like having some of the same changes occurring in both of them even after they have separated and evolved into two different species for example the old world and the new world monkeys provides an excellent example of the parallelism between groups living today since they appears to have evolved in the parallel from a prosimian ancestor that probably lived at least 35 million years ago the reason for parallelism as well as convergence is the same the organisms in order to survive in similar environment must develop similar biological structures parallelism like convergence is a matter of adaptation under the control of natural selection the lack of the tail in a gibbon on the one hand and the great apes and humans on the other is probably a case of parallelism since their common ancestor probably has tail that were lost in a parallel fashion in the separate evolutionary lines after they diverged this figure illustrate the different type of evolution wherein homology the ancestor had the same feature in parallelism where the ancestor had the initial feature that led to later similarity in convergence they had a more distant common ancestor and in analogy no common ancestor is known now let's understand the concept of adaptive radiation the process of evolution of the different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and literally radiating to the other areas of geography or habitat is called adaptive radiation or in other words we can say the evolutionary spread and differentiation of one type of animal of whatever level of classification is called adaptive radiation this picture demonstrate the adaptive radiation of ancestral seed eating ground finch unlike parallelism and convergence which refers to the way a particular species evolved progressively dissimilar environment and opportunities and rapid changes in the external environment may cause new form of animal to develop from a single ancestral form the evolution of a trait that opens up many new possibilities 
may also give rise to adaptive radiation. This picture illustrate the adaptive radiations given by Darwin also called as Darwin's finches. Now let's understand the concept of vestigial organs. The vestigial or the rudimentary organs are the reduced and functionless remnants of the structure or organs which are of no use to the processor but they still persist from generation after generation in reduced form in an individual. They were complete and functional in the ancestors for example appendix in men is considered as the remnant of the large intestine that is cecum but it is considered to be storage organ for the cellulose digestion in herbivorous mammals. The vestigial organs reveal strong evidence of the evolution. They are the remnants of the organ which used to perform a normal function in our ancestors but during the course of evolution they have been reduced to the vestige. This picture illustrates the different vestigial organs found in the men. To name some of them the vermiform appendix in men is one of the vestigial organs, auricular muscles of the external ear, the nictitating membrane, vestigial tail vertebra, the lobe of the ear, wisdom tooth, canines in men reduced in size, mammary glands among males and body hair. Now let us summarize the module. Now let us see what we have understood so far from this module. The evolution of the species tend to be in constant and asymmetrical over successive generation. That is it may be rapid at one time and slow at another. In rare cases it may even virtually stop altogether. At one time evolution may affect the limb at another it may affect the jaws. This variability in the tempo of the evolution of different anatomical structure in the same line makes it unwise to draw a conclusion concerning the relationship of two fossil forms on the basis of a single characteristic. Instead, it is necessary to follow the evolution of the whole functional system. Since the system themselves evolve at different rates, however, information can be drawn by following the history of the single by which it is possible that the course of change of each feature may be different and not comparable even in related lineages. In other circumstances, one may relate the rate of changes to the variance of the character. But the variance of the different characters is itself variable and is probably one of the factor controlling the evolution. Thus, if this number of new species or generation or families increases progressively over a given period, it may be assumed that the rate of evolution is also increasing. It is a matter of considerable importance to recognize that the progressive modification of different system of the body that is body size, brain, teeth, jaw and limb proportions during the evolutionary development of any one group may proceed at differential rates. This is well recognized by the paleontologist. On the basis of a qualitative study of the evolution of the equidae, Simpson has postulated the two theories concerning the rate of evolution. According to him, the rate of evolution of any character or combination of character may markedly change at any time during the phyletic evolution even though the direction of evolution remains the same. The rate of evolution of the two or more characters within a single phylum may change independently. Such differential rate of the somatic evolution may result into structural contrast 
which may be regarded disharmonious because they do not confirm with the similar correlation as observed in the context of the living species. In such circumstances, the true affinities of such fossil forms may thus be overlooked and misinterpreted. It is therefore necessary that differential rate of somatic evolution must be taken into account while selecting the characters for their taxonomic relevance in the assessment of phylogenetic status of the fossil types. Thank you.